so now we will apply another condition on arrival that is again send item to this decision point for another conveyor so there also we are going to put the same condition if it is lesser than 5 you need to send it to second object so if the top conveyor has less than 5 it will send to the top conveyor if it is having lesser than 5 on the bottom it will send to the bottom conveyor but there is a play now if you look at this code if you look at this script what it is going to do is I will going to remove this whole thing so if you check out this so when we check out this what it is going to do it is going to check the top conveyor if its content is lesser than 5 it will be sending to the top conveyor but again this loop is also going to get executed if my bottom conveyor has the parts lesser than 5 it is going to send to the bottom conveyor so every time the loop runs it is going to send it to the bottom conveyor so what we are going to do now is we are going to put else here else means if this is executed this should not get executed and if this is not getting this should get executed so I will apply this and I will say okay so this what means if we are not having part on the top conveyor send the part to the top if we are not having part so once this condition is full now we are having five parts on the conveyor so this is not going to ex get executed now now what we are going to do is the code is getting going to get executed as this one 16th line now it is going to check this if this conveyor has the parts lesser than five then we will start sending the parts to this bottom conveyor now what if this both are full like both conveyors have quantity equal to 5 or greater than 5 then the parts will always be sent to the first port that is output object 1 it is by default on arrival on available basis it is going to send to the first port itself so what I'll do is I'll do ok and we'll check it now by running that hey guys Welcome to the channel IF 4.0. This is Ajay. So we will run the model now and we can check this by making it slower. So you can see the top loop was getting executed. It is checking the top conveyor quantity. Once it's 5, now it will start sending the parts to the bottom conveyor. Now the out object which we have seen in this script basically. So if you see this ob object 1 out object so this is basically the decision point what we have done is we have connected the decision point as an output object to these two decision points so the output one is this decision point output two is this decision point so this decision point will tell that the boxes should go to this decision point if the top conveyor quantity is lesser this decision point will tell if this is full check the quantity of this conveyor if it is less than 5 send the parts onto this conveyor if both the conveyors are full by first available basis send the part always to the first conveyor so I'll run this now we have 5 parts on the bottom and then the parts started going to the top itself so the parts will always go on the top now once we have one part out from this bottom conveyor the quantity goes to less than 5 and then we have new box coming on this conveyor so this is how the decision point modeling and triggering takes into effect these operators are processing those stations which are modeled onto the conveyor and we are having this one meter distance between these conveyors and this is how the modeling will look now we'll put another possible changes into our modeling so we'll now change the color for the top conveyor part and the bottom conveyor part and then we will put area restrictions so if you see now here stations is here and all the boxes are getting accumulated behind this so we don't want this if you check this I will uncheck the connections so if you check this it is just like a train coming behind and all the parts getting blocked behind the station what I want is only one part should be released from this decision point to the station it will be processed once processing is done another part should be released from this decision point so let's start modeling that so we will put the color changes first we'll click on the top conveyor we'll go into the triggers on entry we are going to change the color go into the visuals set object color will make the top object color as blue we'll click here we will go here we'll on entry 
we'll change the visual set object for the bottom conveyors say to green and now if we reset and run if you are looking this the top should turn to blue bottom should run turn to green so I will just make this faster so that we can be able to see the green colors coming off yes so that's executed now we need to put another modeling logic that only one part should go out of this decision point so what we are going to do on this decision point in the triggers when on arrival what we are going to do is we are going to enter the area okay and the current out object so this is the current out object but for the this decision point we don't have any out object what we are going to do is we are going to create the out object so what we are going to do is we are going to create a out connection with respect to this station. so a connection for both of the decision point towards this uh, stations so when we click on the decision point now you will have out as station one so when we go this out object one we have it if for confirmation you can drag this dropper here click on this it's same current dot out object so the maximum content which can go in this area is only one which you have set it we'll set it for the another decision point also we'll put a trigger on arrival we'll put the area restrictions it will enter the area out object one and the maximum content is one and but we also need to exit the area because unless and until we are going to exit the area we are not going to enter the area this is what is the area restrictions so what we are going to do is on trigger on process finish we are going to put exit area this is done and then here we are going to again double click triggers on process finish we are going to put area restrictions as exit area so here condition we haven't put it at if you want to put the condition you can put it area owner so what should be the area owner you need to put that here prioritize entry requests if any another part you need to prioritize you can put that delay time there are many things you can put so this is area restrictions thing for this there are a lot many another triggers which you can use so if you see here in the process finish if I put this on process finish we are having lot many another movement we are having movements we are having area restrictions we are having data we are having control visuals list set conveying speed we can set a conveyor speeds also we can also send the item by case and the I send item similarly for the decision points also we are having lot many uh, triggers like we can stop or resume the object we can stop the motor or delay motor resume motor the motor part will uh, look in upcoming video then we are also having area restrictions entry exit acquire release we are having movements we can also rotate the item if you want translate the item there are data properties where you can set the labels write it to the global table visuals you can start animation stop animation change so these all things basically you can do on the decision point by using the decision point by using the stations you can change the visuals you can change 3d shapes items name you can put into the list you can pull from the list you can also set the conveyor speed and if anything is not listed here you can create your own code from the code snippet and you can enter or put that logic for getting executed so these are a lot of things which we can do with the help of the decision point and the stations from the triggers so now what we have done is we have changed the color we have put the area restrictions now the model should function such like the color should get changed and only one part should be between from this conveyor this decision point and the station so let's begin so i have run the model and if you could see this i will make it slow so if you see this we are having this area restriction here only one part is present between these things see you could check this only one part is available only one part between these areas so this is the uh, trigger logic we have entered onto this so this is how the model will look like at the end of our modeling and this is how the model will work like when we put these triggers and codes into the simulation model 
so this is all about decision points and the stations if you have any queries do put it into the comment section do you have any suggestions do put it into the comment sections do share like subscribe the channel if you find it valuable do support us thank you thank you for your love and we will meet into the another video for photo eyes and motors into the conveyor sections till then enjoy learning enjoy simulating thank you